We're going to look at Romans chapter 9, and we're going to debunk this passage that is used by Calvinists. They use this as their mighty proof text that no one can be saved out of their own free will. And what happens is that God hardens people's heart. So we're going to look at Romans chapter 9. Now, this chapter is rich, extremely rich with Calvinism. It's extremely rich with Calvinism. So, Lord willing, I might cover several more videos on this one. But let's cover the most famous one. We're going to cover Pharaoh. He's the most famous one. God pardoned Pharaoh's heart. Look at Romans chapter 9, and notice what the Bible says at verse... Oh, man, it's unbelievable at verse 15. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So notice right here that he can forgive whoever he wants to forgive, and he can harden the person's heart to reject him the way he wants it to be done. Look at verse 17. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. I think that verse is self-explanatory. That looks pretty cruel. So you'll notice right here what the Calvinists are arguing right here at Romans chapter 9 is that they will insist God has the right to choose whoever he wants to show mercy and whoever he wants to harden a person's heart. So if a person goes to hell, I mean, that's the way God wanted it to be done. Why? Calvinists, they, this is the thing they always talk about. It's like kind of annoying, but they talk about the sovereignty of God for His glory, for His glory. So don't question why God does it. Because God is sovereign enough to do whatever He wants, so let's do it for His glory. Let's think about God's glory. So if it's His glory that He hardens Pharaoh's heart so that He can show the plagues in Egypt and show forth His mighty power, then let Him do whatever He wants to do. But look, that does not give God... I mean, you, gotta, you can't change the fact that what God does is still very cruel, even if it's for His glory. That is still very cruel, that He would deliberately send that person to hell. I mean, if your God is so sovereign and so smart, couldn't He find other means to do it without taking away a person's free will? I mean, that is really cruel. Now, let's explain right here concerning Pharaoh. This is a very important passage that is an important sermon. Calvinists... They have an important point right here, which John Piper, John MacArthur, and then these Calvinists stress on. We believe in magnifying God's glory, amen? And we believe that whatever God does, I mean, whether it's, uh, whether it's hard or it seems bad or whether it seems good and fair, it doesn't matter. We believe that whatever glorifies God, He should do it, and He has full control. We believe in that. But here's the thing concerning sovereignty that the Calvinists will confuse you. They limit his power of sovereignty. Now, that's kind of confusing, but let me explain. The Calvinists accuse us of limiting his sovereignty, but we're going to turn the tables on them and say that they're the ones that limit his sovereignty. Why? Because this is what we're going to argue right here. God has the right to show whoever he wants to harden people's art, and whoever he wants to show mercy upon. But there will still be free will in there. How can God do that? Because he's brilliant. He's not dumb like some Calvinist. Sorry. <laughs> God is not a human mind. He is very brilliant. What he does is this. When a person's free will and free choice chooses to love and accept Jesus Christ, God will take him down the road, whatever he wants, and you have no right to complain. He has a right to take Stan or Jane Kim or Sister Gloria or whoever he wants out of their free choice that, Lord, I love you, I want to serve you. And by that free choice, he can choose whatever he wants on what he's going to do with your life on what his will is. Whatever your job is, whatever uh, person you're going to come across, or how you're going to get involved in the ministry. Amen and amen. But if Stan Jean and Sister Glory, and other people, and let's assume lost people too, lost people, out of their free choice, reject God. He has a right to guide them down on a road and take them to a path that will glorify His name. For example, Barack Obama. 
He chose him and he elected him as the president to glorify his name and to show off all the liberal world on how crummy their system is. And amen and amen on that one. God has a right to take a wicked person, uh, a lost sinner, a lost atheist who mocks at a Christian and then gets rich. The Lord has a right to take him down that path where he can even deceive that person's heart into thinking that he's smarter than God and where he will use his intelligence to make him look like a fool in the end for the glory of Jesus Christ. God has a right, but see, it comes with free choice first. And whatever decision you make, let me warn you folks, you better be careful what you decide. Because God's going to take you down a path that's going to glorify his name. It's going to be for your betterment or for your worse. If you don't believe me with Pharaoh, God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Well, look at Romans. I mean, let's start with Exodus, right? Exodus, Exodus. I mean, Scripture with Scripture. Let's start off with Pharaoh. How was Pharaoh's heart hardened? Look at the book of Exodus. And we'll look at chapter 3. Chapter 3. Let Scripture interpret Scripture. And God will explain why he hardened Pharaoh's heart to glorify his power. We're going to look at the book of Exodus, chapter 3, and we'll look at verse 19. Now, this was long before God hardened Pharaoh's heart, yes? Yes, this was when God was speaking to Moses at the wilderness. Look what God said, verse 19. Why did he harden him? And I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go, no, not by a mighty hand. Look at that. He already knew that Pharaoh would make the choice that he's not going to let them go. That's why... The next verse is going to show he's going to use that to harden his heart and glorify his power. Look at verse 20. And I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that, he will let you go. Look at that. See that? God knew. God knew. Now let's keep reading right here. Look at chapter 4. Chapter 4. Chapter 4. And verse 21. Chapter 4 and verse 21. And this is still before the Bible says God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Look at chapter 4 and verse 21. Free choice first. Notice right here that the word of God states, And the Lord said unto Moses, When thou goest to return into Egypt, see that thou do all those wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thine hand. And notice right here, But I will harden his heart, that he shall not let the people go. Notice chapter 3. God was still speaking to Moses right at the wilderness. Chapter 3, notice it was free choice first. Pharaoh hardened his heart. Chapter 4, now God explains he hardens his heart. Now is that stage true? So let's look at that stage again. So we saw first case, the wilderness, right? Exodus 3, first case. How am I going to write this? Okay, I know. Exodus 3 and Exodus 4. We, we saw first stage. First stage, free will. We saw that at chapter 3. Does that match? First stage. Second stage, hardened heart. Is that correct? Have we seen, is that sequence correct? Yes, we saw that. He is speaking to Moses. First stage, second stage. Let's keep doing that. Let's look at a second, let's look at another case right here. Look at the book of Exodus, chapter 5. Exodus 5. Did that come to pass? Exodus chapter 5. And we will read verse 2. Second case. Let's see if this matches. Is it still free choice first? And then uh, the later part of Exodus, it's hard and heart? Is that true? Hmm. Exodus chapter 5. And verse 1, And afterward Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh. First time. First time they went to Pharaoh. Okay? Now let's keep reading right here. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. Notice, I will. My will. Free will first. That was first. Exodus 5, 1 and 2. Now, second stage. Now let's see if his heart got hardened. Look at chapter 7. Chapter 7. Hmm, I wonder. 
I wonder if this gauge is correct. We're going to look at Exodus chapter 7. And notice what the Bible says about Pharaoh's heart. Verse 13. And he hardened, now this was before the plagues of Egypt still. And he hardened Pharaoh's heart that he hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. Boom. Boom. See, it matched the stage. Exodus chapter 7. And let's keep reading right here. Let the scriptures interpret. We're going to look at chapter 8. Chapter 8. Chapter 8 and verse 15. Now look at this. Notice that it didn't say the Lord hardened his heart this time. We see free will still in play. Look at verse, chapter 8, verse 15. But when Pharaoh saw that there was respite, he hardened his heart and hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. Boom. But let's keep reading. Now you see this back and forth of free will, and God is following along his free will on what he's going to do to glorify his name. That's why the Calvinists limit his sovereignty. How? Because God is so sovereign and powerful that whatever free will you make, He's still on the throne and in control, and he can use that for his glory, whatever choice you make. So you can turn the table on the Calvinists. When the Calvinists, John Piper, MacArthur, Washer, and James White, and all these guys say, well, you're limiting God's sovereignty, you're taking away his free will, you turn the tables on them and say, no, you are. You are. But let's keep reading. Look at the scriptures, verse 19. Then the magician said unto Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. Again, we see that. He hardened his own heart. Let's keep reading right here. Verse 32. Verse 32. Let's go through all the scriptures. And Pharaoh hardened his heart at this time also. See that? Again and again. Free will in play. And then you'll see God following along over and over. Look at chapter 9 and verse 12. Chapter 9 and verse 12. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh. See that? Again, the Lord's hardening Pharaoh's heart. We see that all over. Let's keep reading. We're going to look at verse 34, chapter 9 and verse 34. And Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunders were ceased. He sinned yet more and hardened his heart, he and his servants. Look at that again. Now let's keep reading verse 32. Uh, well, we already read chapter, excuse me. Verse 34, chapter 10 and verse 1, chapter 10 and verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the heart of his servants, that I might show these my signs before him. Boom, and notice right here, God says that he hardened Pharaoh's heart. Now, you see this over and over and over and over again. You see right here that Pharaoh, he hardened his own heart, but then the Lord, he would harden Pharaoh's heart. Free will following along with God controlling. Verse 20, but the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he would, uh, chapter 10, verse 20, excuse me. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of Israel go. I mean, over and over again. Verse uh, 27, but the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart and he would not let them go. So we see right here that this sequence is proven true by Exodus 5 and 7. Free will first then he'll harden your heart. That's why Romans 9, he has the right to choose which vessel. And if this vessel says, I reject Jesus Christ, you can't tell him what to do. He has a right out of his own control against your free will to damn you into hell. Once you make the free will, I reject Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter if your free will after that says, I don't want to go to hell. No, he can do whatever you want. He will damn you to hell. He can destroy you. He can take away your life. If you're a saved Christian and you say, I received Jesus Christ for salvation, the opposite is true, which is a blessing. You can't go to hell even if you wanted to, praise the Lord. You're going to heaven no matter what. So that's how God works with his sovereignty.